OK, here we're asked to use an appropriate local linear approximation to estimate the square root of 65. Now, to do these, what you want to do is find a value that's close and known. So I'm looking at the square root of 65, and I think, well, that's kind of close to the square root of 64, right? It's 64 plus 1. And I know what the square root of 64 is. So the local linear approximation formula is, All right, so we have f of x naught plus delta x is approximately equal to f of x naught plus f prime of x naught delta x. And we're going to derive that in a minute, but let's first let's see how we can use this. All right, the first thing you're going to need to do is identify the function. So the function here is the square root. So we'll use the square root of x. And then, well, let me rewrite that as a power, so x to the 1 half power so that I can find the derivative, right? Because we're going to need the derivative as well. So f prime of x, using the power rule, is 1 half x to the minus 1, 1 half power, which is 1 over 2 square root of x. And there's our derivative. We're going to need that. So we have our function here, and we have our derivative. Now we're also going to need an x naught and a delta x. So what is that? Well, we already kind of figured it out, right? So this here, the 64, is our known value, our known domain value there, 64. And 1 is going to be our delta x. That's the little bit extra beyond 64 that gives us 65. OK, so using the formula, we would simply substitute these numbers in. All right, So we would have f of 64 plus 1. right, And that will be approximately equal to f of 64 plus f prime of 64 times the delta x, which is 1. All right, so when we substitute, then we can actually start making the calculations. So here we have square root of 64 plus 1 is going to be approximately equal to square root of 64 plus 1 over 2 times the square root of 64 times 1. All right, f prime, remember, was 1 over 2 square root of x. And so that should be pretty easy to calculate. That square root of 64 is 8 plus 1 over 2 times 8 times 1. And 2 times 8 is 16. So we have 8 plus 1 over 16, which is equal to 8.0625. All right, so now what does all this mean? We just showed that the square root of 65 is approximately equal to 8.0625. In other words, square root of 65 and what I want you to do is get your calculator and try that. See how close we got. Remember, this is an approximation. So on a calculator, square root of 65, yeah, we got pretty close. 8.0623. OK, so now I'm going to try to explain where that formula comes from. The local linear approximation formula. So let's say we had a function here, f of x, and a known value, x naught. Right? The corresponding y value here would be f of x naught. And remember, this is going to be known. So that kind of corresponds to the square root of 64 in the last example. Now, x plus some little bit, delta x, is kind of what we want. So that's going to be the f of x plus delta x. right? And that's going to be the square root of 65 in the last problem. So again, that's what we want. Now we know if we sort of drop an altitude and form this triangle here, this distance is delta x, and this distance is delta y. Now the derivative was involved, right? So the derivative is the slope of the tangent line. Let me try to draw that. OK, there's a tangent line. The next thing we want to do is define the differential. We define dy to be equal to f prime of x dx. So that differential dx, we can divide that. dy dx equals f prime of x. And that should look familiar. But we're going to think of that as like a rise over run, right? A slope, the slope of the tangent line. And so if I draw this picture to the, to the um, tangent line like that, this distance is the rise, right? So that's going to be the differential dy. And the run is this distance dx. So you could see the run is the same as delta x. dx equals delta x. 
But what I want to show you here is that by, with this definition, dy, the differential, is a little bit longer than the, the delta y. So this is the delta y. And we can say delta y, then, is approximately equal to dy. And that approximation will get better and better as this point moves in closer to x0, right? As, it's, as the delta x gets smaller. And so this little bit right here is the error. OK, so once we sort of establish that delta y is approximately equal to dy, then we're home free. Because we know what delta y is. Delta y is um, this distance here. So f of x, yeah, so f of x0 plus delta x, that's really x0 right there, minus f of x0. And that's going to be approximately equal. And so that's the change in y. Now the dy is f prime of x0 times the delta x. Now delta, it says dx right there, but remember dx is equal to delta x. All right, and then finally we can just add this term right here, f of x0 to the other side. And we have f of x0 plus delta x is approximately equal to f of x0 plus f prime of x0 delta x. And so that's the formula we used in the last example. Super important to see that dy, the, the differential dy, is approximately equal to the change in y. OK, so here we're asked to estimate cosine of 46 degrees. Now, we know cosine of 45 degrees. So we can think of this as cosine 45 degrees plus 1 degree. And so we'll use a local linear approximation to do that. And here's the formula that we derived. OK, so next we need to figure out what f of x is. We need to figure out what x0 is, delta x, and the derivative. So for this particular example, let's let f of x equal cosine x, right? That's the function that we're working with. So we're also going to need the derivative. So f prime of x is going to be the derivative of cosine is negative sine x. And then we already broke it down. We know our known value there is 45 degrees. And our delta x is going to be equal to 1 degree. OK, so let's substitute those values in to our formula here. Right? And so we have f of 45 degrees plus 1 degree. Well, that's going to be approximately equal to f of 45 degrees plus f prime of 45 degrees times delta x, which is 1 degree. Now we have to be a little bit, a little bit careful here. Remember, um, when we derived that the derivative of cosine was minus sine, we kind of used radians, right? And we're in degrees. We need radians for this to, to work. So what I'm going to do is multiply by pi over 180 right there and get the radian equivalent for 1 degree. OK, so be careful there. That gives us cosine of 46 degrees, right? The function is cosine, and 45 plus 1 is 46. Um, it's approximately equal to cosine of 45 degrees minus sine of 45 degrees times pi over 180 radians. OK, so this equals now, I just said we had to be working in radians, right? And that's 45 degrees. So think of this as pi over 4. Cosine of pi over 4 is square root of 2 over 2. Well, it happens to be that cosine of 45 degrees is square root of 2 over 2 as well. Minus sine of 45 degrees, square root of 2 over 2, times pi over 180, which equals square root of 2 over 2 minus square root of 2 times pi over 360. OK, so on a calculator, I get approximately 0 0.6948, rounded off to four places. OK, so now what does that mean? That means we just did a linear, a local linear approximation, and we found that cosine of 46 degrees is approximately 0 0.6948. And in degree mode, you should try that on your calculator and see if we got close.